Welcome, this is a video produced by the Diabetes Dietitians uh, the Maid Stone and Tunbridge Wells Trust. We work with the antenatal team to provide support for you around your diet now that you've been diagnosed with gestational diabetes. So I'm Louise, I'm one of the two diabetes dietitians based over at Tunbridge Wells um, at the Abbey Court site and I work with my colleague who will introduce herself now. Hi, I'm Ashling. I'm one of the diabetes dietitians and I'm based mainly at Abbey Court. Hello, I'm Eleanor and I'm the third dietitian. I'm based at Maidstone Hospital. And we are all looking forward to meeting you and helping you to manage your gestational diabetes during this pregnancy. Now, a lot of people, when they are diagnosed with gestational diabetes, feel tremendously anxious. There's a lot of information available on the web and some of that information is very frightening. Some of it is incorrect. So what we would like to do is to use the opportunity of this video to give you some initial advice and information on the sort of dietary changes that we would advise you to make to help you to manage this condition. So first of all, we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at what sort of things to eat uh, when you have this condition. So what sort of diet you're looking at. Uh, we're going to look at uh, how often you should eat. And we're going to address the subject of carbohydrate. And then after that, we will discuss some of the other questions that are commonly asked by women who have gestational diabetes. So I'm going to hand you over to Ashling now, who will address the first three topics. Thank you. Hi, in terms of the diet, it's just based on healthy eating. Nothing is forbidden. We're encouraging you to eat foods from all the food groups. So if we start with the carbohydrates, so carbohydrates the umbrella term for starchy foods and sugary foods. Starchy foods being oats, grain breads, potatoes, pasta, so preferably the high fiber grain varieties. So to include those with every meal. Due to the fact of diabetes, we're encouraging you to cut back on sugar and sugary drinks and sweets as they do push up your blood sugar levels. We're encouraging you to have plenty of fruit and vegetables in the day to include some iron rich protein foods and also to think about dairy, so things like milk and yogurts and cheese in your diet. So again, just looking at an overall balanced, healthy diet. In terms of the timings of meals, we're encouraging you to eat, to spread your food out across the day. So whether it's three meals and then two or th one or two snacks between every meal. Again, in terms of snacks, encouraging you to eat the healthier variety options where possible. As pregnancy progresses, you may find that you do need to spread your food out over the day, and that would in may include the carbohydrate, which can be included in the snacks. In terms of carbs and what you might may have read about cutting down or cutting out, it's not a good idea in, in diabetes. If you restrict your carbs too much, your body produces ketones, which is not healthy for you or your baby. So following on from um, what Ashling was saying about um, the diet, general diet for gestational diabetes, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the carbohydrates and the eating pattern. Um, it's really important that you aren't hungry. This is not a weight loss diet. Um, we want you to have enough calories and part of that um, and being able to manage blood glucose levels, maybe that you need to moderate the amount of carbohydrate that you have at meal times. So to make up for that and spread the carbohydrate load over the waking hours, you do need to include the snacks between your meals, so mid-morning, mid-afternoon and at bedtime. So it's thinking about the quality of the carbohydrate, so the type of carbohydrate you choose, but also the amount you have at any one time um, and spreading that out over the day. In terms of snacks, um, Ashley mentioned we would um, recommend that you have healthy um, snack choices. 
um, you will get a lot of information sent out to you um, and there's going to be lots of snack ideas there and you can obviously ask more questions at um, the education session that you attend. One of the um, uh, aspects uh, around um, the diet is that you might be feeling you really want some sweet foods. Um, so in terms of that, we would encourage you to go for those sweet foods that, um, uh, such as fruit, but also things that are sweetened with artificial sweeteners. Um, so that could be things like sugar-free jelly. Definitely swapping to the sugar-free um, or diet drinks um, and the no added sugar squashes rather than the ordinary fizzy drinks or fruit juices or sugary um, drinks. And artificial sweeteners can be used to sweeten your um, hot drinks too. Um, the sugar-free sweets, just remember with those that they can be laxative, so you can't have too much at any one time. <laughs> um, in relation to hunger, um, if you have had your carbohydrate at your meals and at your snacks and you're still hungry, then go for those um, snacks that are lower in carbohydrate um, but are still filling. Things like nuts are a really good option. Um, or it could be um, uh, um, lean meats um, or cheese, egg, that type of thing can be used to fill you up both at snack times but also at meal times too. And the other benefit of having some protein with some carbohydrate is that it can reduce the blood glucose rise after eating. So really good for helping you to manage those post meal blood sugars. So I'm just going to finish off our video by uh, looking at situations where, or what we do when your blood sugar levels are higher than we'd like them to be. So one of the troublesome or the most troublesome blood sugars to keep in range are the pre-breakfast readings. And a lot of people really wonder about why their blood sugar level is high first thing in the morning and really there are and what they can do about it and the reason really that your blood sugar level may be too high when you wake up is that you haven't been eating overnight and with dawn your body produces a whole host of hormones really designed to get you up out of your cave and ready to fight your woolly mammoth. Um, your pregnancy hormones also peak at that time. And all of these hormones act against that hormone insulin, which is, controls your blood sugar level, and that can lead to a high blood sugar level. So there are two things, or three things rather, that you can do that will help to manage that blood sugar level. So the first thing that you can do is to try and have your evening meal before seven o'clock. The second thing is to try and be mobile or physically active for at least a little while in the evening. Um, as pregnancy goes on, most people feel quite exhausted by the evening and it, the sofa is very tempting. Um, but if you can, try and be a little bit active after your evening meal. And then the third thing that you can do is to have a bedtime snack. So the sort of bedtime snack we would recommend is a small amount of carbohydrates. So a glass of milk and a plain biscuit perhaps, uh, or a yogurt. Um, and often those three things together are enough to manage the blood sugar level. Sometimes dietary change is not enough to manage the blood sugar levels. And that isn't your fault. It isn't because you haven't tried enough. And it doesn't mean that you need to eat progressively less and less and less to manage those blood sugar levels. What it means is that you need a little, treat, a little bit of treatment to manage your blood sugar levels. And that's something that if we get to that stage, we will discuss it with you. But for now, I think we've given you a, hopefully some insight into 
managing or changing your diet because of this diagnosis of diabetes, gestational diabetes. And we look forward to working with you in your pregnancy to help you make some changes.